back to the garage here at Alpine Garage Sports. For those of you who have been subscribers of mine uh, this past month, you'll notice there's something different. So a little bit tighter shot. I added a studio mic right here so that you guys could hear me a little better because it sounds like I was talking into a tin can. And so that feedback is very much appreciated. I always welcome feedback, so please give me some feedback. Now I've taken a couple of days off. You haven't seen me in a little bit. But I wanted to talk about the last press conference that we just had about two days ago with the coaches at University of Colorado. For the most part, that press conference was very prototypical of what you would see. I'm proud to be at Colorado. We're working really hard. We're going to make a big impact. And that was the tone of the press conference, which was good. That's what we want to hear. We want to hear this prior being made. Tim Brewster came on. And he made a pretty memorable speech, which Tim Brewster is very well known for. He's known for his speeches. One of the media guys there, and I don't remember his name, asked him the question, hey, Tim, you know, when you came in to the University of Colorado, that first speech that you did with the team was very uh, basically old school in your face, up, down, up, down, up, down. I don't know if you remember get that, guys. Stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. Very drill sergeant-esque, and it kind of really set some fires in some particular camps that you may see on social media. The parents, especially the CU parents, a lot of them didn't know what to make of that. You know, uh, some people understand that old school mentality, that kind of drill sergeant mentality, and some don't. But he mentioned that and he said, what do you think about how the parents took it? So, Coach, you mentioned, and I'm glad you brought that up because there's a fine, you know, it's tricky trying to throw that line between old school discipline and social media. Right. You were kind of in the middle of that. You were seen in a video. You guys have been very upfront about some of the behind the scenes stuff. Right. Where some guys, you were very loud and very vocal with them. I'm wondering what kind of feedback you got from that and how mixed it was because I think a lot of us in this room got mixed responses and got some parents saying, yeah, I love that. Some parents saying, yeah, I don't. But you're. Are you, you're, are you you're, referring to my welcome to I'm the really team? Welcome to the stand up, sit down. Yeah. Do this, right? Absolutely. A little bit of the full metal jacket bit. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, it's been wonderful. It really has. And, and I think that the Colorado buff people are so want to win. They're so, I think, you know, it's time to win again and to win. You have to have amazing pride in the name on the front of your Jersey and the name on the back of your Jersey. Okay. And when I asked the team to stand up, I didn't sense a tremendous, you know, like stand up with the pride that you're representing the University of Colorado. I didn't sense that, okay? And I wanted, I wanted those players to, to feel, I'm proud to be a Colorado buff, okay? And, and for us to turn this thing and win, it, it's going to take tremendous player pride. Stand up with your head up and your shoulders back and be excited about where you are. We're not walking softly, okay? We're bringing it with every single thing we got, okay? And, you know, there's, there's certain people that, that, that maybe, you know, God, I, got, I love the game so much. You know, I love the game so much, and the game deserves to be rewarded by how we you know, how we do things and how we carry ourselves. I believe if you love football, football is going to love you back. You know, and, and so, uh, uh, I don't know, you guys tell me. You know, there's, uh, there's some people that, you know, all I know is this, is that I, Tim Brewster, am going to pour every ounce of everything I got into making this program great again. And if our players and every other coach responds the same way, we're going to win. What coach, coach Prime said, we're coming. I'm waiting to say we're here. And then he also mentioned it in the same respect as the speech was very similar to R. Lee in Full Metal Jacket. And I went, whoa, that's right. It actually was very similar to that. So I'm going to play those back to back. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about. When I say stand tall, okay, I want you bouncing out of your seat and stand tall. When I say stand tall, get your up. Stand tall. Sit your back down. Stand tall. We come. We come. Raise the goddamn roof. Raise the roof. We come. We come. We come. We come. 
Them Colorado bus buses show up. Oh, 60 minutes of hell coming with it. 60 minutes of hell coming with it. The time is now, man. The time is now. I am Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, your senior drill instructor. From now on, you will speak only when spoken to. And the first and last words out of your filthy sewers will be, sir. Do you maggots understand that? Sir, yes, sir. But I can't hear you. Sound off like you got a pair. Sir, yes, sir. If you ladies leave my island, if you survive recruit training, you will be a weapon. You will be a minister of death praying for war. So now do you see what I'm talking about? They're actually very similar. So Tim Brewster seems to me to be a very old school coach. I've seen him talk before when he was at Jackson State. And he's a very passionate, very old school, very rock 'em sock 'em, smash him in the mouth. He speaks with a lot of tone and he gets the player's attention. When he's coach on position out on the field, you can see him he'll grab he'll grab the player by the jersey and he'll shake him and he'll say, I want you to hit him right in the numbers, right in the numbers. I want you to go get him. I want you to stick your helmet right between their shoulder pads and I want you to drill him back. I don't want you on the ground, I want you in the air. He's very much a in-your-face kind of coach. And that is not what a lot of the players here are used to because that was 60s, 70s, 80s, maybe early 90s mentality in coaching. And since then, they've gotten a lot more calm and kind of insightful and things like that. But Tim Brewster just keeps going. Now, the funny thing about this is, is that I had a coach like that when I was playing. And his name was Coach Baca. And for Coach Baca, if you're still around, Coach Baca with the Panthers. You'll know who I'm talking about. We won a state championship with this coach. But I remember as a young guy seeing him come in and saying, basically very similar, I'm your coach, this is our quarterback, and then basically everybody else is going to have to find their position on the team. And he was that old school take no, take no guff kind of a coach. And that drew the line in the sand for me, along with my father at that time, who was a very big disciplinarian as well. I stepped to when I was a young guy, and I found that place that I didn't want to cross, and I understood at that point being a kind of a lazy player, I'll be honest with you, before that season I was a lazy player. I wasn't lazy after that, and we actually won a state championship, and I feel like I was a bigger part of that team because I didn't sit on the sidelines. It was very possible without that I would have. So he kind of reminds me of that coach. Is that the right way to coach? Is that something that would motivate you as a player? Do you think that's something that motivates these young guys as players right now? Or is it another coaching style? In any case, he's our coach, right? And he is kind of known for these famous speeches. And let me give you a few of his quotes that are kind of things that I've taken away from him being, I would think, positive for the team. So the first one is, we are going to bring 60 minutes of unadulterated hell. <laughs> that's like, I want to put that on. I use the word unadulterated a lot in speeches. I, I do have speeches, but I like the word unadulterated. And the, it, it brings a smash mouth terminology to, you know, we're going to strip off all of the things that we can hide behind. And we're going to expose ourselves fully to this process. And we're going to win because of it. And to, so to me, that, that really resonated. Another one was, who's going to strike the match? That was very profound. I actually heard him say that for the first time at Jackson State. And he's right. Really, when you're talking about inspiring people and getting a team motivated to win, you're looking at someone has got to be the person that stands up and creates the magic. And that can be a player. It can be, and oftentimes it is a player, it can be a coach. It can also be a third party that has no affiliation with the school, which happens a lot. Very similar to like that Cincinnati mayor thing that happened right before the Super Bowl. Someone talking trash about the school and the school uses that as their kind of their driving force to really just bring that 60 minutes of unadulterated hell. But in this case, he walks along and he's slapping helmets and he's saying, who's going to strike the match? Who's going to be the person that actually goes out there and makes a play to light this thing on fire? Who's going to be the first one to lay out their opponent? Who's going to be the first one to make that magic catch with one hand, with one foot before they go out of bounds and light the thing on fire? Who is going to light this thing on fire? He also said, if you want to get some, you got to bring some. Basically, I took that as there are no handouts. 
If you want yours, you're going to have to bring an equal amount or more, and then that will be due you. And I thought that that was very profound when he was saying it. So during those speeches, he had a nod to McCartney, which was a big deal to me, being an old school bus fan. So check mark there in favor. And then he also stated that, you know, we're, we were brought here, he was brought here, and the players are brought here to win now. So he's not going to accept excuses why we're not going to win now. He is going to win now, and they're going to win now. And I think that by saying that repeatedly and showing the confidence there, that could be the difference between someone feeling like I'm part of a rebuilding process and now I'm into if I don't perform immediately, then I probably won't be playing. Same with the coaches. If the coaches don't bring the schemes and the direction the way that they should, they're probably not going to be there for long. I mean, coaches wanting to win now, and there's a good reason for that. I have a good reason why I think he needs to win now. Obviously, everybody wants to win. But I don't know that coach is in it for the long haul, like 10 years of mediocrity until they get good. He wants it to be immediately, and he will get the right players here in order to get that now. After Tim stood up in that media conference, you could tell a couple of times he stopped himself. He was going to go into one of his full-on speeches, and he remembered that this was a media event, and he wasn't talking to the players. I honestly feel that. He held back a little bit because he knew that those speeches are for the, for the players. Those players will react. The media and the people who are not players will have their own separate reaction, and some of it might be negative. His speeches are for the team, and he wasn't going to give that to the media. And I respect that. He didn't say that, and I, he may not even have meant that, but that's the way I took it. And it hit me immediately. So the fact that it hit me like that, I'm pretty sure that that has some merit to it. Now, is Tim Brewster the kind of coach that is going to bring our tight ends and basically help our offense be successful with this old school mentality? Put that down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Is, is this old school mentality too much? Is a little bit more finesse and influence going to be better in this particular case? I mean, we don't know. He's a very successful coach, obviously. And Coach Prime understands his value. So at that point, I am bought in. And regardless of coaching style, because I know there's not one coaching style that is the best coaching style, that Coach Brewster belongs here. He will make us successful, and I appreciate him. That is a wrap from Alpine Garage Sports. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you in the next video. And if you haven't heard, we coming.